Hello and welcome back to Principles of Macroeconomics. I am your host, Dr. B. Happy to have all of you with us uh, today. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us uh, as we talk about elasticity. Uh, and before we jump into our conversation on elasticity, I, I do want to call your attention to the classroom. Uh, where we are in in the content, uh, believe it or not, we are already in week four of the semester. Uh, it's going by fast, isn't it? It's it feels like we just started, but we're in week four already, and that's it. Just kind of blows my mind sometimes, you know, of of how how fast time goes by. So so that's where we are today. We're in, we're in week four. So when you get the opportunity, please uh, take a look at the uh, week at a glance, which is where you, you can find the PowerPoint presentations and or I'm sorry, the, the overview information and the PowerPoint presentation is going to be under instructional materials. A couple of short videos uh, through LinkedIn Learning to kind of help us to understand elasticity a little bit more. Uh, they're relatively short, so feel free to take a look through those. Uh, for this week, we have a hypothesis video on price elasticity, which uh, uh, for, so far it sounds like a lot of you are enjoying these hypothesis type videos, and uh, I am too. I think they're a lot more engaging than just your typical discussion board, so it makes it a little bit more fun. So we'll have the hypothesis video uh, uh, for due on Sunday, and that. So you'll have that due on Sunday, and then you will also have the chapters five and six quiz combined uh, due on Sunday as well. So let's go ahead and and talk about this concept called elasticity, uh, and uh, what it means, why we look at things like elasticity, uh, all of those things. So let me go ahead and see if I can learn how to. Use PowerPoint because for some reason it just doesn't like to do what it does. So sorry about that. Uh, hopefully you can all still see my screen. Okay, so uh, elasticity. The idea behind elasticity is that we're measuring the responsiveness of a change in the quantity demanded or supplied. The way I want you to think of this is when the price changes on a particular good or a service that you would normally buy, what is, what is the effect on you buying that good or service? So, for example, Let's say, hypothetically, oh, I'm sorry, for some reason, this is uh, this just giving me a hard time today, apparently. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, that you enjoy Someone was detected at your driveway. Uh, slices of pizza, okay? And uh, the price of pizza, a slice of pizza, is uh, $2.50. Okay, not bad. Pretty reasonable. So let's say that price, and, and, and at that price, you would normally buy four slices of pizza. Okay, $2.50 a piece. Looking at, uh, you know, what, 10 bucks. Okay, very cool. So let's say the price per slice goes up to $3 a slice. What do you think? Are you going to buy more? Or are you going to buy less? What do you think? Would you buy more or less if the price of for per slice goes up by fifty cents, or the same? What do you think? Same. So you can so Zipporah can she can tolerate the fifty cent increase. Okay, that's good. What what about the rest of you? Would you pay the fifty cents more? Per, per slice, or would you, would you say you buy this? Would, would you buy more, the same, or less? The price goes up fifty cents. Okay. 
Camille would pay it. Okay, great, great. Okay, so now you're paying three dollars a slice. And uh, what if the price goes up to three dollars and fifty cents a slice? You're gonna buy the same or less? Now three fifty. Now we're you know getting up there. Instead of four slices, maybe three, maybe two. Now, the conflict. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that's that, that's the idea behind elasticity. Elasticity measures your your willingness to pay for something based off of a change in the in the cost. Okay. So, if the price goes up on something that you frequently buy, there's a great chance you're going to buy less of it. Okay. That's that difference, we call that elasticity. It's based off of the, your responsiveness to a change uh, in the um, quantity based off the of change of price. Yep. That's elasticity. That's the very basics of it. So price elasticity is how much the quantity of the demand is responsive to the change in the price. So Elasticity measures the change and your willingness to put up with that change in price or that change in quantity. When the price changes, it measures your responsive. The elasticity measures your responsiveness to that change in the price. There's a couple of things in this world that we're still going to pay regardless of how much the price goes up by. Okay. We know that we can eat less pizza, and we'll just eat more of something else, right? You know, we'll go to hot dogs or whatever, whatever, you know, hamburgers or whatever you guys like, you know. Or if you like vegetables, you, you know, salad or whatever. So we we substitute, right? We go to something else when the price goes up on, on our preferred good. Now, uh. When it comes to gasoline, that is something that the elasticity doesn't matter as much because you're going to pay it. You have to. There's no substitute. Unless you have an electric car and a gasoline car, there's no substitute for you. Okay, so elasticity, when it comes to something like gasoline or housing... Or, you know, clothing. These are things that uh, elasticity doesn't matter as much. The reason for that is because regardless of how high the price of gasoline goes, you're still going to pay it. You have to. That's how you get around. Okay? Or you might take the bus, but you see what I'm saying. Okay? Elasticity of the mint. This is the percent change in the quantity demand, demanded by, divided by the percent change in price. I'm going to give that formula to you one more time. Price elasticity of demand is measured by the percent change in the quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. Okay. How do we measure percent change? We take the new amount minus the old amount divided by the old amount. Okay, the new amount minus the old amount divided by the old amount. That gives you the percent change. Okay, that's a quick and easy way to calculate percent change. So percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price gives us the price elasticity of demand. It's a number, right? It's a, and it's usually it's usually close to a whole number. It's usually greater than one, less than one, or equal to one, right? And we're going to talk about these uh, next. When demand is elastic, 
which uh, based on the fact that individuals are responsive to substantial changes in price. In other words, in my pizza example, if pizza goes up, you buy less. That's elastic demand. Okay, the quantity demand changed because of the change in price. Right? Price went up, you bought less, that's elastic. That's what elasticity means. When demand is inelastic, it means that the quantity of demand changes only slightly when the, there's a change in price. And here's what I mean by this. I use gasoline as an example of something that's inelastic. And the reason for that is because the price went up slightly. You're still getting the same amount of gas. Or you might get a few gallons less. But only by a little bit. It's inelastic, you see. There are some of the determinants of elasticity when... You know, why, why do we care, right? What's influencing elasticity? The availability to choose close substitute. If I can substitute uh, hot dogs for pizza, close substitute, right? Kind of, well, not really, but kind of. Then the good is more elastic. So pizza's elastic because I can choose to eat something else. Right? Elastic. Inelastic, gasoline, I don't have the ability to drive either electric or gas. For me, it's just gas. Okay? That's what I can afford. And so there is no substitute for gasoline. And that's why it is inelastic. The other determinant for elasticity is necessity versus luxury. Gasoline is a necessity. I need it to get from point A to point B. It is inelastic. It's a necessity. A luxury is eating a slice of pizza. Okay, that's a luxury. I don't need to eat the pizza. Although I like it, I don't need it. It's a luxury. So, these are the what things that de uh, determine elasticity. Other determinants include things like the definition of what is a market. As you know, a market can be defined differently depending on the type of market that we're looking at. A market could be the exchange. Of stocks and bonds, that's a market. The exchange of goods and services, that's a market. Uh, things that are closely grouped together, that are similar products or goods and services, that's a market. So how we define the market is a determinant. If it's more narrowly defined, it can be considered elastic because... Uh, there's a lot of substitutes, right? Options. The time horizon is another determinant of price elasticity because the demand is more elastic over long periods of time. Okay, for example, the price of gasoline, if it, it, it typically stays the same day over day, Okay, short term, it usually stays the same. Sometimes it goes up and down. Yeah, short term spikes up and down the price per gallon. Okay, but if gasoline were to steadily rise every day for a year or longer, that is more elastic because it's over a longer period of time. These are the determinants. 
So how do we compute elasticity? Again, it's the percent change in the quantity de demand divided by the percent change in price. Uh, we use the absolute value to drop the minus sign. Fancy talk, right? No. But this formula looks a little crazy, right? It's, it's not uh, the most clear. So to make it clear for you, the way I th like to think about it, it's the new amount minus the old amount. The new amount minus the old amount divided by the old amount. The new amount minus the old amount divided by the old amount. That gives you the percent change. Uh, times a hundred will give will you know make it where it needs to be. New minus old divided by old times hundred. You want to do the, the the top part of the of the fraction first. Yeah? New minus old, you do that first. Divided by the old amount. Okay. Uh, is that are we all pretty clear on the formula for this? Right. Hopefully that helps to clear it up because I, I know that this formula is a little fuzzy. <laughs> right? There's a lot of variables here. But again, the way the way the best way to make this formula the most clear that I can is you take the new amount minus the old amount. Do that first. Okay? And then divide that up that number by the old amount. That gives you the percent change. You see? Clear? Makes sense? Y'all okay? Yes, no, maybe? Yes, Professor. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, very cool. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's the best way for that formula. So, elasticity, if the, that amount, that percent change, okay, one percent change in the quantity demanded by, divided by the percent change in price, if that amount is greater than one, it's said to be elastic, okay? If it's less than one, it's inelastic. If that number is equal to 1, it's said to have unit elasticity, or also known as perfectly elastic. It's right. a uh, way to think about this. So greater than 1, elastic. Less than 1, inelastic. Equal to 1, it's perfectly elastic, has unit elasticity. When the demand is perfectly inelastic, it's said to be equal to zero. Perfectly inelastic, equal to zero. In that case, if it's perfectly inelastic, it's going to have a vertical demand curve, uh, straight up and down. It's at zero. Okay? For when... Uh, Elasticity is perfectly elastic. It is said to be infinite. In that case, it's going to be a horizontal line. Of course, uh, the demand curve, as you know, it slopes, right? It's supposed to slope. That's, that's the idea. When it's flatter... There's a greater price elasticity of demand. I'm going to show you a couple of demand curves and what we're talking about here. So on the left-hand side, we see that it's a, a vertical a line. This tells us that it's perfectly inelastic. Okay. Regardless of what happens to that price, if it goes up or if it goes down, the demand remains the same for the quantity. 
It's perfectly inelastic. I like to use the example of gasoline for inelasticity because regardless of what the price does, I'm still buying the same number of gallons of, of fuel every week. On the right side, we see inelastic demand less than one. If the uh, price goes up, we see a very small decrease in the quantity. Okay, example for this example, the price went from four dollars to five dollars. The quantity dropped by ten. Okay, it's not very much. Very small difference. That means it's inelastic. When we have elasticity, we see that the quantity changes a little bit more um, significant. Yeah, price went up a dollar. It's a twenty-two percent increase. Quantity dropped by that same twenty-two percent. It went from 100 to 80. Yeah, so that's more significant. That's a change greater than one. Yeah. Now, if you use to f to find this line, use the formula. It's the percent change in the quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. You take the new amount minus the old amount divided by the old amount. In this case, for quantity, we would take 80 minus 100, that gives us negative 20, divided by 100. New minus old divided by old. 80 minus 100 is negative 20, divided by 100. Okay, minus 20 divided by 100 it's negative point two. Okay. Negative point two. Right? So that leads to a twenty-two percent de decrease. You see, just multiply that. Hundred. And if we do the same thing for the percent change uh, in price. Two minus. Old divided by old. New price is five dollars. Old price is four dollars. So that's five minus four is one divided by four. One divided by four. Yeah, so it's a, what's that? Twenty five percent. So point two divided by point two five. That gives us our unit elasticity. In this case, equals to one. Uh, elasticity of demand you can see that uh, if when it's greater than one, we uh, see a significant difference in the quantity demanded. 150 of a one dollar increase. That's huge. And when you see a difference that big, you know it's elastic. It's elastic. When the elasticity. Uh, is said to be perfect, it means that we have a horizontal line. What that means is the uh, quantity doesn't change. Price doesn't change. Okay. So what does all this mean in business? Right? It's like, why, well, why do we learn economics? Well, we need to know economics in order to run a business successfully. Uh, and we take these basic principles, like elasticity, to be able to set our prices for the things that we sell. I know that if I increase the price of my goods and services, my customers ain't going to be too happy. They'll probably buy less. If I lower the price, I might get more sales. So we need to look at what the impact of these price changes are on our sales. The way we do that is by looking at what we call total revenue. 
total revenue represents the uh, total amount of revenue sales. The business earns. Okay. Also, another way of saying that is the amount paid by buyers and received by the sellers of a good. The best way to think about total revenue is it's the total amount of goods and services the business sold and earned revenue on it. Okay. When a business sells something, they earn revenue for the sale of those goods and services. To find the total revenue, or to, or to find, I'm sorry, to find the price, we take, or, yeah, to find the total revenue, we take the total price times the total quantity. How many units you sold and at what price? Multiply those two together to get total revenue. Okay? You can do the same thing for individual products, or for the whole business. The formula applies. When there is an increase in the price, if the demand is inelastic, there's going to be an increase in total revenue. The price of gasoline goes up, people still need to get the gasoline, don't they? So the total revenue increases. Still buying it. Need to. However, if the demand is elastic, meaning a price of a slice of pizza went up by 50 cents, there's going to be less people buying it. Okay, so the total revenue decreases when it's elastic. You see? graph represents total revenue okay it's the price times quantity equals revenue price times quantity equals revenue equals total revenue price times quantity i get my price times my total quantity i get my total revenue and we total revenue falls along our demand curve so in this example uh, I sold 100 units, $4 a unit. So that means I've earned $400 in revenue. It falls on the demand curve. So let's talk about when there's a change in the price. Let's say the price goes up for whatever it is that I'm selling by $1. So now I'm charged $5. Well, if I charge $5, I'm going to sell less of it, but not by much. Okay, price up to $5, I only ended up selling 90 units at $5. So what happened to total revenue? 5 times 90. My revenue actually went up by $50. We call that marginal revenue. When it goes up slightly, we call that marginal. What about uh, if I if it, if it's elastic? Okay, if it's elastic, the price goes up by a dollar. Now I'm only selling 70 units. Okay, the earlier example is gasoline, right? Let's let's say I'm selling gasoline here. A little bit less quantity, but I still made more profit. Revenue. In the case of a slice of pizza, I was selling slices of pizza at $4 a piece. I sold 100 pieces of pizza. I raised my price to $5 a slice. Now I'm only selling 70 of them. Yeah, makes a big difference, right? So when that happens, revenue drops. Yeah. 
I went from 100 to 70. 70 times $5 is 350. So 350 is less than 400. So what was it before? So again, to recap what we're talking about here, uh, a sensical way. When the demand curve is inelastic, inelastic, okay? It's uh, going up a little bit. The price and total revenue move in the same direction when demand is inelastic. So in other words, if the price goes up, so does total revenue. An elastic, think about gasoline. Everyone needs it. doesn't matter if the price goes up, they're going to pay more. They still need it. An elastic. When something is elastic, slice of pizza. Okay? It's greater than one. The price and the total revenue move in opposite directions. If the price goes up, on a piece of pizza, the total revenue goes down. Less people will buy it when you move it from four to five dollars. Yeah. If the demand is unit elastic, meaning it's equal to one, the total revenue remains constant. That's that represents the ho the horizontal line. Equal to one. On a linear demand curve, linear, yeah, a line, there's a constant slope. Call this rise over run, for those of you who may recall statistics. Okay. Rise over run is how we find the slope. Okay, the increase, the price, the change in demand. That's rise over run. Different prices of elasticity are represented on the demand curve. Okay. For inelastic demand, the points were the low price and high quantity. When it's elastic, price the points are with high price and low quantity. Let me show you what that looks like. Elasticity is greater than one. Inelastic, less than one. Okay. Here we have a demand curve. It's of a linear slope. Rise over run is how we find the difference. That's how we find the percent change. That's how we find the slope, right? Rise over run. So, for example... Uh, seven to six dollars price went down. That's an increase in the quantity from zero to two. Eyes overrun six to five dollars. That's an increase of another two units. Rise overrun. You see, five to four dollars. It's an increase of another two units. Rise over run. You see, that, that's how we calculate the slope, the curve. To simplify it, you could put this in Excel. Okay, if you use Excel, you put the price and the quantity. So individual lines, okay, individual columns. You find total revenue. Take price times quantity. How do you find total revenue? How do we find the percent change in price? Okay, we take the new price minus the old price divided by the old price. What about percent change in quantity? We take the new quantity minus the old quantity divided by the old quantity. Take change in price, I'm sorry, change in quantity divided by change in price to find elasticity. Anything greater than one is elastic, less than one is inelastic, and equal to one is elastic. 
Excel is your friend here. This, this is a very easy thing to do in Excel. Okay, so we talked about price elasticity. Now let's talk uh, a little bit about income elasticity. When your income changes, your responsiveness changes as well. Okay. Let's say your income goes up. There's a great chance you're going to spend more money. Makes sense. Your pay went up, you're going to spend more. You have more disposable income. Okay, I could go out and buy some more things. If your income goes down, the opposite's true. You're not going to go out and spend as much. Just as we did with price, income works very similarly. Percent change in the quantity demanded divided by the percent change in the income. Income instead of price, basically. When there's a change in your income, you also look at goods and services differently. You have what's called normal goods and inferior goods. A normal good has a positive income elasticity, meaning it's directly correlated with your income. You're going to purchase necessities and probably some luxuries. Necessities, meaning food, shelter, transportation, and four walls. Yep. Those are necessities. You need to, you know, you're going to buy that regardless of what happened. They're relatively, the small elasticity or even inelastic in some cases. Luxury goods, you'll probably spend more on luxury goods if you're making more money. Okay, luxury could be a slice of pizza. You don't need it. It's not necessary, but you like it, so you'll buy more of it. If you've got more money. So because you're earning more, you're going to buy more luxury goods and necessities. Okay? You're going to buy less of other things of lower quality. We call these inferior goods. Okay? Inferior goods, meaning things of lesser quality, are said to have negative income elasticities. You buy less of the inferior goods because you have more money to spend. Simple way of looking at elasticity of income. What about cross-price elasticity? This represents how much the elasticity demanded of one good responds to the change in the price of another. Okay, for example, the price of ketchup goes up. Okay, that means that the price of mustard goes down. It's a direct correlation. The goods are usually bought together, but you buy more of or the other depending on the change in the price. Okay, we call that cross price elasticity. It's the effect of one price on another good. When there's a percent change in the quantity of demand of that first good, we divide by the percent change in the price of the second good. Okay, in other words, I'm going to take um, the percent change in the quantity demanded of ketchup divided by the percent change in the price demand of mustard. And that will give me the cross price elasticity of these two goods. Some goods can be used as substitutes for others, meaning, I could buy one good over another. These goods typically are used in place of of the other, yeah? That's what a substitute is. I'll buy this instead of this. There's usually a positive cross-price elasticity of substitute goods. 
We also have what's called complementary goods. These are goods that are typically used together, like ketchup and mustard. Okay. These usually have a negative cross price elasticity. So we talked a lot about the price elasticity of demand. Now we need to talk about the price elasticity of supply. That's the goods and services available, right? Supply. So how much quantity supplied of that goods and services or is a response to the change in the price? Okay. If the price goes down, I'll supply less of it. If the price goes up, I'll supply more of it. They're directly correlated. Okay. Price goes down, I supply less. Why would I supply less when the price goes down, not more? Because the market is saturated. Okay. Meaning, let, let's say I'm, I'm an orange farmer. I sell oranges to grocery stores. Okay. I supply 1,000 uh, oranges to the grocery store at 10 cents a piece. That price goes down to five cents a piece. I'm going to supply the grocery store with less. A price supplies the, them with 500. The reason for that is because there's already too much of it available. Let's say I'm an orange farmer. I supply the grocery store with a thousand oranges at 10 cents a piece. That price goes up to 15 cents a piece. I'll supply the grocery store with more oranges, not less. Why would I do that, you might say? Because there will be less oranges available on the market. It's the law of supply and demand. find the price elasticity of supply, we take the percent change in the quantity supplied divided by the percent change in price. The, the, this all depends on the flexibility of sellers to change their prices. Okay, elasticity of supply. It's the quantity supplied based off of the percent change, the changes in price. When this, that's when it's elastic. Yeah, I could change the price. Elasticity. When it's inelastic, we change the price incrementally. Very small change in price. We'll change the quantity based on that change in price. The time horizon has a lot to do with this. If the price changes over the long run, meaning greater than a year, the supply is more elastic. Yeah. So how do we find the per uh, price elasticity of supply? We take the percent change in the quantity of supply divided by the percent change in price. Very similar to demand, right? So again, we take the new quantity minus the old quantity do that. Find that first, and then divide that by the old quantity. That will get you a percent change in quantity. Then we do the same thing for price. The new price minus the old price divided by the old price. That gives you the percent change in price. We take percent change in quantity divided by percent change in price to find the price elasticity of supply. Supply curves, very similar to demand curves, but of course, as you know, the difference is they are upward sloping to the right, usually. When it's unit elastic, supply elasticity equals 1. If it's elastic, it's greater than 1. If it's inelastic, it's less than 1. Again, very similar to the way demand works. 
supplies perfectly in the elastic, it equals zero. It has a vertical curve. If it's perfectly elastic, it has a horizontal curve. It supplies infinite. So when it's uh, perfectly elastic, it's uh, vertical. When it's perf you know, perfectly inelastic, it's vertical. Well, inelastic, it's slightly curved, you see, to the right, upward sloping to the right. Incremental change, yeah? Incre a small price change in price equals a small change in the supply. You'll notice again, as I had mentioned earlier, the increase in price correlates with an increase in supply. Something is elastic, change is greater. Slight change in the price equals a greater change in the quantity. For five dollars, from 100 to 125, 22 percent increase. Quantity supplied. As, elast as the elasticity is even greater than one, the change is even more significant. Increase by 100 in the terms of the quantity, yeah. And when it's the elasticity is perfectly elastic. The supply is infinite at a set price. So on the supply curve, there are different price elasticities, as you would suspect as the price changes. Points with low price and low quantity are said to be elastic. Capacity for production is not being used. The price... The points with higher prices and higher quantities are said to be inelastic. So this is where the opposite component of demand comes into play. So we see that the price elasticity of supply can vary depending on its elasticity. Yeah. The greater elasticity, the greater the difference in the quantity. Here we have an example. So we'll we'll show you the application here. Farming. Uh, a new hybrid form of wheat crop. The twenty percent increase in production. You'd think that'd be good, right? So of course it increases the supply, a uh, higher quantity at a lower price. Demand is inelastic. So total revenue will fall. The reason being is because wheat and other farmed products are necessities. Necessities are relatively inelastic. Yeah. So even if it's it, uh, the change is incremental, it results in a decrease in total revenue. It goes up, quantity goes down slightly. Okay, it's inelastic when that happens. So, why might this be a bad thing, you might ask? Because in farming, the margins are so small because the products are necessities. Okay, so if their total revenue decreases, that's a bad thing for the farmers. They produced more of it and sold more of, uh, uh, more of it at a lower price, that's good for the consumers, not so great for the farmers. Same is true with oil. Uh, as prices of uh, oil increases, which actually we're experiencing that right now in 2023, to some extent, uh, the sh in the short run, the supply and demand are inelastic. Because again, small spikes... It's okay. You know, uh, it's inelastic. It's a short run thing. It's like price went up today, might go a little bit down tomorrow. That's cool. That's fine. But in the long run, if those changes uh, occur, it's a little bit more elastic. You know, people think about 
taking other modes of transportation in that case. So uh, here on the left, we have the short run, you know, short spikes in prices or decreases in prices. It's like, yeah, it's, it's inelastic, yeah, incremental changes. But in the long run, as those, we look out on a time horizon, it's more elastic yeah, as time goes on. So there's a lot of different applications for for uh, elasticity on things like drug and crime rates and you know other social economical factors. It's just another application of the supply and demand curve uh, when it comes to elasticity. You can really look at a lot of different correlations for for applying elasticity to both the supply and demand curves. So that's our discussion on elasticity. Any comments, questions, concerns on elasticity before we jump into the next chapter? Or are we all doing okay? Anything at all? Brandon? How are we? You're good? Okay. All right, cool. So so let me go ahead and uh, stop this part of the recording, and then we'll, we'll jump into uh, Chapter 6. So uh, stand by.